All right, folks, here we go. Chapter six. Um, I've broken this chapter up into three lecture segments. Um, students generally don't find this to be a very difficult chapter. There are only three or four calculations and they fall right out of our unit analysis approach. So very little memorization, easy calculations. Um, I've changed page 6.0 just a little bit. Uh, here's what I'm recommending, and this is what seems to be most successful. Uh, this lecture segment is going to cover 6.1, 6.2 in, in our checkbook. In our textbook, that's pages 162 to 167, 167 to 169. I strongly recommend that you read those four or five pages. Think about it for an hour or a day or so. Read uh, 67, 167 to 169. Think about it for a day. You know, Separate these a little bit. And then come back to the lecture. The students that do that do really, really well. All right, let's dive in. If we look at um, page 6.1, I have a hint about what's coming up. This is it. Unit conversions. Remember chapter one and so many chapters. We're going to know some unit. We know some ratios and we're going to know the units we want to get to. And that's going to be our guideline for solving these problems. A reminder I have to, oh yeah, how do I get atomic mass for an element? Do I know the names and symbols for elements? Can I balance chemical equations? Chapter five. And then, gosh, there's unit conversions for word problems. Page 6.2, I put a periodic table. If you tip your head 90 degrees to the left, no, I guess I could do it here. There's a periodic table. Now you'll notice, I'm going to zoom in. I have this feature. Check this out, my $200 camera. Will that work? That no, works very poorly. This resolution. Okay. What you're going to notice is, here, I'll do this. What you'll notice is, like, if I look there at aluminum, it's got like 10 significant figures and so on. I would say two digits past the decimal is more than enough. So your periodic table says 26.9815386, something like that. 26.98 is going to be fine. But you'll probably need this out for everything you do in, in a Chapter 6. All right, I'll turn this off. Let's look at page 6.3. Now, this is a bummer. In my office, I have a flask, regular flask, looks like this. It's sealed at the top, and there are candy corns in there. I don't have red, yellow, and white, but you know, I've got a whole jar of candy corns. When I was teaching general chemistry at, at Tahoe, I always taught this in the fall. So candy corn, Halloween candy. Now here's what I want to know. I've got the weight of the candy corn. I weighed the flask, poured the candy corn in. So I know I've got 585 grams of candy corn. Now outside of that candy that's in there, I did a whole bunch of experiments I weighed out a dozen candy corns, weighed out a dozen, weighed out a dozen, weighed out a dozen. It turns out the average is 18 grams of candy corns per dozen. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to count those candy corns in that flask without opening the flask. Now you might stop and think for a minute and then we'll talk about how we do it. Okay, here's how we're going to do it. If I know the weight of some individual or some quantity of candy corns, and I know the total weight, it says, I want to know the dozens. And I know I've got this ratio. I'm going to write it like this. 18 grams per dozen. Now, I put dozen on top because I'm trying to get to dozen. Well, if I've got 585 grams, bingo, chapter one, grams cancel, and I've got dozens, and that comes out to be 32.5 dozen. So the big idea in the first part of chapter six is we're going to count by weighing, 
I didn't have to count those. I knew the weight. I knew the weight per some quantity, and boom. Now, the second flask I have right now in my office, if we were to go there, I have this sample flask set up. There's my flask. Should have gone to art school. Flask. 113 grams of water. Now I have this crazy unit here. A dozen water molecules weighs 2.99 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. Water molecules are small, so even a dozen weighs 10 to the negative 23 grams. It makes sense. And I want to count the dozens of water molecules. And I know I've got 113 grams, chapter 1. That would do it. Now, a lot of you will have a hard time making this work on your calculator. So I would pause and say, okay, do I know how to multiply 113 by basically one dozen and divide by that. Now think about it before you do it. Should this be a big number or a small number? So stop and try this on your calculator and then I'm going to give you the answer. Okay, you figured out how to do it. You got a big number. I have 3.78 times 10 to the 24 dozen molecules. Now if you didn't get that, this is the time to stop the video and say, wait a minute, what buttons do I push on my calculator to get that? If you've got it, let's move on to this last one. Now I had this crazy thing. No, this is new. <laughs> I have this crazy, it's still crazy. 18 grams per 6 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. All right. And right below it, I have this new word. I've got 18 grams of water per this new quantity called a mole. It's just an amount. So if I said, okay, I'm trying to get to moles, whatever that is. Moles just another quantity like dozen or anything else and what I've got is 113 grams mole of molecules per 18.0 grams of water molecules and when I do that math I get this crazy thing 6.27 moles of water. All I've done is count. It's just a new counting unit. So let's look at this thing of moles on page 6.4 in, in more detail. You know a dozen is 12. If you remember Abraham Lincoln's uh, famous speech, a score is 20. A gross, I don't know why they sell pencils by the gross. A gross is 144. A ream, office paper, 500 pages. Now a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And you're thinking, what is this wacky number? Now by the way, Uh, we save a lot of time. Instead of writing mole, M-O-L-E, mole, mole, we often abbreviate it as mole. I have no idea why we just dropped that E. But anyway, mole, moles. Now why? What is this crazy reason? Well, there it is. This might not be apparent immediately, but remember an AMU is what we weigh an individual atom in. It's a very small unit of mass. One gram is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 AMU. This may or may not make sense, but if you look at a periodic table, you'll say, oh, there's the atomic mass 
on average, a carbon atom weighs 12.01 AMU. Well, this new thing, one mole of carbon atoms, is 12.01 grams. So it's a super convenient thing. I can look at the periodic table and say, oh, one carbon atom weighs 12 grams. Oh, if I have 12, excuse me, one carbon atom weighs about 12 AMU. Oh, 12 grams is this unit one mole. We can do that for every single element on the periodic table. So we'll say one mole of any element is its atomic mass in grams. You're just counting by weighing. So if I go back to that periodic table that we had on page two, I'd say, oh, 26.98 AMU is one aluminum atom. If somebody said, give me a mole of aluminum atoms, 26.98 grams. That's for one. That's for a mole of them. Now go to the periodic table, look up silicon and sulfur. Two, sig two digits past the decimal, what would you get there? So pause, go look that up on page two, then come back and see if we got the same numbers. All right, you found 28.09, 28.09 per atom per mole. Uh, sulfur, 32.0. 6 or 0, 07, 32.07. Now, some people freak out because depending on which periodic table you use, that last digit might be up or down one. It doesn't matter. Two places past the decimal is sufficient for us. So now we can say, oh, if I have 0 0.5 grams of aluminum and I want to know moles of aluminum, here's my conversion factor. 26.98 grams, <laughs> one mole aluminum, grams of aluminum. There's my new conversion factor. When I do that math, I get 0 0.019 moles of aluminum. Now try the same thing for iron. Stop the video, get a piece of scratch paper, or write it down here, up here, wherever. Can you convert 0.5 grams of iron into moles of iron? Now I'm going to give you the answer alone. If you got this answer, great. If you don't, I want you to work backwards from this answer. The 0 0.50 grams of iron is 0 0.0090 moles of iron. Now, Right away, something should come out. Well, a mole of aluminum, or half a gram of aluminum, gives me more moles of aluminum than half a gram of iron. Aluminum is lighter. Same mass, there's more atoms. Iron is heavier. Same mass, fewer atoms. All right, let's look at 6.5. 6.5 for us this semester. Do this. No, I'm just not going to do it. 6.6. .6. Okay. This is just nomenclature. This is just semantics. I want to help you. You're going to run into this mole, this weight per mole in different terms. So those are, of course, molecular compounds. Molecular. Well, the smallest unit is a molecule. These are, of course, ionic compounds. The smallest unit of that is, for say this aluminum, is two aluminum ions and three oxygen ions. And say, so, well, we often say that's a formula unit. That's the smallest amount. I have exactly that recipe in ions. So let's see here. I have these three terms that we just sort of use interchangeably. 
we might say, oh, formula weight, molecular weight, or molar mass. Now here's the thing. I got NH3 as 17.04. We'll talk about how we do that in a minute. I'm saying that's its formula weight in AMU. That's its molecular weight in AMU. The molar mass, it turns out, is 17.04. So we might say, oh, uh, formula weight is 17 grams or 17 AMU. Oh, the molecular weight is 17 AMU. Oh, the molar mass is 17 grams per mole. This is most useful to us now. Turns out SCL2, about 103 AMU formula weight. We might say 102.96 molecular weight. We could say 102.96 grams per mole. Iron 2 chloride turns out is 126.75, 126.75. AMU per molecule, it's not really a molecule, AMU per formula unit, and 126.75 grams per mole. So we might use those terms um, interchangeably, and maybe even slightly technically incorrectly, but it's okay. So how are these things related is the question. Formula weight, molecular weight, molar mass, they're all the same number, just different units. Now, we didn't really talk about, well, wait, I could look up nitrogen. I can look up hydrogen. How do we get NH3? Well, it turns out it's actually pretty easy. The molar mass of an element, the atomic weight of that element, the molar mass of a compound is just the sum of atomic weights. Per mole of compound. So if I look up at NH3, nitrogen weighs about 14, hydrogens weigh about 1. Oh, 14 plus 3 ones, oh that's where that 17 comes from. We'll do a couple of these. Iron, it turns out, is 55.85 grams per mole. How about FES? I put the molar mass or the molar masses up here for you. But could you do that? It's trivial, but maybe pause the video. Calculate that one. Calculate that one. Well, you took the 55.85 plus 32.0607 and you got oh 87.91 grams per mole. FeCl2 55.85 plus 2 times 35.45 that's where I got the 126.75 grams of FeCl2 per mole of FeCl2. Okay, let's look at page 6.7. And again, I'm going through this fast, of course, because I know you can pause the video, and I also don't want these giant files that'll take forever. I don't know what you're looking at this on. I don't know how your internet connection quality is. What do we do? Well, calculate molar mass. I'm just going to give you the answer. What I want you to do is go back and figure. So pause the video. Do those. Calculate those. 